All right, this is a video to get us through the 2B1 material and just a little bit into the 2B2 material. Um, so the 2B1 material was covered in a good chunk of the pre-video for our class, our second class meeting this week. So this is just really kind of reiterating some of the things that were in that pre-video. So the mean of a set of data is when we add up all the items and we divide that by the total number of items. So we think of that sometimes as an average. Um, that's another word sometimes people interchange for mean. The median is going to be the value in the middle when our data is listed from least to greatest. This can get a little tricky because if you have an odd number of items, you're going to have just one value in the middle. So that'll be easy, that'll be your median. If you have an even number of items, you're going to have two values in the middle and we average them. So the median equals the average of those. Okay, so you've got two values in the middle because you have an even set of data. You have to add them together and cut it in half to get the median. And then I'm running out of room. So the mode is the item that occurs the most frequent. So the most repetitions of the same item. Um, sometimes you have no mode. If you don't have any items that are repeating at all, you would have no mode. If you have a single number that repeats more than all of the others in the list, then you would have that as your mode. You could even have two modes. If you have two numbers that both repeat the same number of times and it's the most frequent, then they would both be modes. Um, so sometimes that's a little bit more flexible depending on what the situation is. So let's look at this example. It says, Susan randomly selected a sample of plants to determine the average height of the total 35 plants in her garden. So she's only taking a small sample. She's only gonna measure the heights of eight of her randomly selected plants and record that data. Now I've already organized this in order from least to greatest, so it'll be easier to find the median. But if it wasn't, you could do that yourself. And I always recommend doing that first. So to find the mean, and by the way, this is a sample mean since she's not um, using all 35 plants. She's only using eight of her plants in her garden. We write X bar as the notation for a sample mean, okay? We add up the items. So it's 2.5 plus 3.5 plus 4.2 plus 4.5 plus 4.8 before um, plus the 5.3 plus 6.0 plus 6.2. We'll divide that by how many items there are, which is eight. Um, so we've got, to figure out that numerator. So let's work that out. So I'm adding it together on a calculator. I believe it comes out to 37, but I wanna double check. Yeah, so this top comes out to 37 divided by eight. And they didn't give us any rounding rules, so we're just going to write the whole answer. This one does have a terminating decimal. It's 4.625. And notice that would be in inches since it's related to what our data is in. But a lot of times Newton doesn't have you write the units. So 4.625 inches. Um, the median, well, that's going to be based on, in fact, let me do that in a different color. That's going to be based on the middle of the data. And since our data is listed from least to greatest, this will be easy to find. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have an even set of items. So there's going to be two numbers. You'll notice if that they're, um, if the middle is actually here, that's what splits our data set into equal parts. But we need to find that number by averaging the two on either side of it. So 4.5 plus 4.8 divided by two, that'll give us our median. In other words, what's just halfway between those two values? And that is going to be 9.3 divided by two, which when we divide that on the calculator, we get 4.65, okay? And then lastly, the mode. Well, to have a mode, you have to have an item that repeats more than any of the other ones. All of these are singular, unique items, so we have no mode, okay? So like I said, this is very, um, heavily taught on that pre-video assignment for this week. So this is just another example of how to find mean, median, and mode. Now, another type of question you'll see in that homework for 2B1 
is they're going to sometimes ask you about whether or not something is a sample mean or a population mean. Remember we talked about how this one was a sample mean because she did not use all 35 plants in her measurements. She just used eight of her 35 plants. So she took a sample or a subset of the whole entire garden. So let's see if we can figure that out and see what the difference is. So a university administrator is interested in determining the mean salary for all 50 advisors at the university. So um, the entire advisor pool is 50 people. To calculate the mean, the administrator adds all of the salaries together and divides by the number of salaries, which is 50, to arrive at the mean salary of 54,000. Now, is this mean salary a sample mean or is it a population mean and which symbol would we use? So since all 50 advisors were included in the calculation of that mean, this is a population mean. And we do have a special symbol for that. Instead of the X bar, it is a little Greek symbol. This is the word mu in the Greek alphabet. Um, kind of looks like an M and a U kind of squished together a little bit. But um, if they had said, you know, to calculate the mean, the administrator picks 10 randomly um, advisors and takes their salaries and adds them together and then divides by 10, that would not have been using all 50 advisors. The, the whole, all 50 advisors are being used in the calculation. So that's what makes it a population mean. Okay. So this next section, like I said, we're only going to do a, uh, like the first page of this for the uh, notes for this video. We will pick up with the rest of 2B2 in class on Monday. So weighted averages is what our project one is going to be over. Now, we're not going to get to the part that uh, is over the project one in this specific video. It'll be when we get back together in class because there's two ways you can actually do weighted averages. One is by doing it by counts, and that's kind of how your GPA works for the college. The other one is doing it by what we call category percents. Um, now that's what the project's over, and that's how most of our classes at Ivy Tech, not all of them, but most of them work on some category percentages. And you'll see that really quickly if you look in a syllabus and you see homework is 10% of your grade, quizzes is 15% of your grade. If you see those kind of listings of percents per category, you know you're doing a weighted average. Um, so we're going to first do the weighted average by counts. This is um, how they officially define it. I like just jumping in and doing it because sometimes reading the word count and value can confuse people. So I want to go ahead and look at the page of the first page of examples. So it says a bank wanted to understand the customers who were applying for mortgages. Throughout six weeks, the bank collected the data depicted in this table below. This data will help them better serve the customers needing a mortgage. What is the average age? So that means whatever we're calculating when we do our, our mean here, our weighted average, we're looking for an age value, a total sum of all the ages, okay? That's what we want on top of a customer applying for a mortgage. So, well, if these are all of the ages, we're dividing by the people who are actually, how many applications, so the number of applications that they got. So that'll give us the average of the age of people who were applicants, okay? Round to the nearest whole number. Now, the way they've got this listed for us, instead of actually making a huge long list of every single person who came in and writing down their age and just putting a comma, because we're actually measuring ages. So instead of doing that, instead of writing five people had the age of 30, that would have been 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. They would have had five 30s in their list and then we would have had seven 31s and so on, okay? Instead of making that huge, huge long list of all the application ages, they've shorthanded it in a table. The value of what we're looking at, which is ages, and then this is what we call the counts. How many did I have of this value? Now, the total value by category when you're doing it by counts is just multiplying the 30, which is the value, times the counts. Because if I added the five 30-year-olds together, that's the same thing as multiplying five by 30. So 30 by five or five by 30, however you wanna write the multiplication, is 150, okay? So let me make sure I share my calculator so we can quickly do the rest of these. So we're just multiplying the age and the counts together. So 31 times seven is 217. I'll write at least that one there. Not going to write all the steps for each of the um, the multiplication parts, but it's 32 times six, so that's 192. 33 times 12, 
which is 396. 34 times 21, that's 714. Remember that represents 21 applicants came in that had an age of 34. If we added all of their ages up, that adds up to 714, okay? And then 35 times 17 is 595, okay? So all of the, remember this is a sum of all the ages per each age value category, okay? So if we add all those up, that's the sum of all the ages of all of the applicants they saw in those six weeks. So 396 plus 714 plus 595, okay? That's 2,264. Now, the number of applicants is also important because we don't know how to find an average unless we know how many people we were, we were uh, counting, essentially. So we do five plus seven plus six plus 12 plus 21 plus 17. They had 68 people come in and actually apply for the mortgage. So the total of all the ages that they saw for those applications were 2,264. The number of applications they took in during that time period was 68. If we divide this and then round to the nearest whole number according to our directions, That'll tell us the average age. So that's about 33 years old, okay? Now, I wanna point out, that's not the most frequent. The most frequent or the mode is actually 34. Um, there were more applicants in that group than any other group. The average, remember, is affected by all the total number of applicants, okay? So it's not just which one was the most. Um, now, let's do another one, and then I want to talk about one just uh, made up GPA problem real quick, and that'll be the end of this video. So a lady knits scarves, gloves, and hats. She sold 30 scarves for $18 each, 28 pairs of gloves for $15 each, and 40 hats uh, for $25 each in November of last year. What is her average sales price per the item? So when you're trying to figure out which one is your value and which one is your count, the value has to do with how are they asking the question? It's the average sales price. So the sales price is going to be the value. The number of items that she sold is going to be the counts then. So we have gloves. Oh, let me write them down. We have scarves, which I spelled wrong. Should be V E S. Um, scarves, and then we have gloves, and we have hats. Those are our three different item types. So we had $18 for every scarf, $15 for every glove, and $25 for every hat. She sold 30 of the $18 value. She sold 28 of the $15 value and 40 of the $25 value, okay? So remember to get our total value by category, which means we're actually getting, for this specific situation, it's gonna be the total in sales that she made. We multiply each of those sales prices times how many she sold. So 18 times 30 is $540. 15 times 28 is 420. 25 times 40 is 1,000. We add all of those up and that's going to be total money or total sales divided by the number of total items. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Average price per item. So we need to add up not only the total sales all together, but the total items, the counts. So 30 plus 28 plus 40 is 98. So that's going to be my denominator. How many items I sold or she sold. Um, and then we have 540 plus 420 plus 1,000. That's $1,960 that was sold. And we divide that. And that comes out to an average of $20 per item. Okay, that's the average sales price. All right, um, one I'm gonna make up really quick is just a little GPA example, just because that's one that's, I think I had one in the pre-video, but just in case I didn't, it's relevant to your um, college career. 
So your semester GPA is on what we call a four-point system. So we have an A is four points. That's its value. Okay, these are the values. Three for a B, a two for a C, a one for a D, and a zero if you get an F in a class. Um, so let, And then the counts when you're doing GPA are your credits. How many credits did you take? So if we have a student who, let's say, they're just taking three classes. So they're taking Math 123. They're taking a Chemistry, maybe 101. And let's say they're taking one of the IVT 100 classes. I don't remember all the numbers for those. Okay, so those are their classes. They're going to have their value, which is their grade that they got. They're going to have their counts, which is the credits that they took. Okay, we're going to find the total value for that semester. And then we're going to divide that by how many counts they took, which is how many credits. So let's say this person made a B in Math 123, but they made a D in Chemistry. And let's say they made an A in their math um, IBT class. Now, Math 123 is worth three credit hours. A lot of our science classes are worth four because they have a lab involved. And then the IBT class is only usually one credit. So total number of credits, we can already get that. That's our denominator. So for GPA, we do our total value sum, which we're going to find in just a second, divided by our total credits for that semester. So that would be eight. We already know that. So that's going to be eight on the bottom. Now we need to figure out the value. So remember, a B is worth three points. A D is worth one point and an A is worth four. So three times three is nine. One times four is four. Four times one is four. You add this up, they have 17 points that they earn towards that GPA. So that's 17 divided by eight. So for that specific mess, uh, semester, usually we round those to two decimal places. They have a C GPA and actually a pretty low C. And the reason for that is the class that carried the most weight, they had a very, very, very low score in. So if you think about it, each of these, if you have an eight credit hour semester or, you know, eight weeks or whatever, and you have this distribution of grades, the credits, it's like making a B in three one credit hour classes. And this is like making a D in four one credit hour classes. So you see we're more heavily weighted in that D situation. Even though we made an A here, it only counted as one of those eight total credits. So the heaviest weight had the lowest um, grade value. So that's why we ended up with a low GPA. Now, just um, for your own information, GPA that is reported on your final transcript is cumulative. So it actually continually adds each new semester, it recalculates your GPA your, for your cumulative GPA and divides by it gets your grade value times the credits for everything you've ever taken, and then divide that by total credits attempted for your whole time at the college. So um, that's where we're going to end this video. We'll be picking up our first uh, example in class with this number five. All right. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful weekend.